After watching some pretty scolding reviews from Gamers Nexus covering AMD's latest CPU reviews, man, it's got me pretty depressed as to what kind of products AMD is going to be laying out for gamers this year. That changes today, though. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ryzen 7 5800X3D in our hotfix review. Let's start it off with some application performance, and to make a long story short, the 5800X3D performs just like many modern 8-core processors on the market. For technical reasons, the 5800X3D has to take a 4.3% reduction in its boost clock speed, but where it lacks in clock frequency, guys, it triples the amount of L3 cache available to it. However, many of the applications as we're seeing on the screen, they don't really favor the increased cache size that's included with X3D. Nevertheless, even with the reduced frequency, it is able to keep up with its faster clocked brother, the 5800X. In fact, it trades blows in many tasks that content creators might find themselves tinkering with, such as encoding or graphic design. However, though, if you're relying on your CPU for work tasks or production type of work, such as encoding, compilation, or render jobs, the 5900X and its 50% more cores is definitely the better choice. But how about with gaming? Can the X3D's lack of clock frequency actually be picked up with that cache size and live up to AMD's marketing claims? In short, heck yes! On average, the X3D scores about 8 percentage points faster at 1080p than the 5900X, and more impressive is the 12 percentage point increase at 1440p. Of course, these are average results, so let's take a look at the best and worst performing games. Now, I tested all 10 games today at multiple quality settings to get a kind of a mix between CPU stressful situations and settings more comparable to what a typical RTX 3080 would experience. If you guys would want to see a more in-depth review on all the data that I'm showing today, make sure that you hit subscribe and let me know down in the comments. The best results for the X3D come from Borderlands 3, where at high detail settings, we see a massive 23% improvement over the 5900X. And what's even more amazing are the medium results. Guys, we are seeing a 37% improvement over our previous gaming champion. On the other hand though, it's not all rainbows and unicorns for the X3D. In Cyberpunk 2077's built-in benchmark, low detail settings does show a sizable 10% improvement over the 5900X. Unfortunately, bumping up to a more realistic graphic experience with the high detail setting, the lead vanishes to within noise of even this 6-core processor. At the end of the day, the 5800X3D nets us between 0 and 33% improvement over its sibling, the 5800X. But is that performance improvement actually worth it? We'll answer that in just a minute. I got another little twist to add to the equation. Over the past couple weeks, I've been getting back into streaming over on Twitch in order to get ready for some LAN parties that are coming up. I've got my eyes set on DreamHack Dallas 2022. Many PC gamers have been told to pick up the 5600X or any of the modern 6-core processors for gaming, but as a content creator, having extra cores definitely helps with multitasking as well as X264 encoding. So it got me thinking, does the X3D make sense as a compromise between excellent gaming performance and massive core counts? In order to test that, I fired up OBS, set up X264 with medium quality preset, and ran it at a 5000 kbps a pretty standard Twitch setup. Now, this isn't a typical streaming setup. I have three different webcams going, one that's grabbing like the scenery from the event, plus a couple of different angles for my face cam. I've also got a capture card and I'm also processing NDI input into my rig in order to create a wicked esports production setup. With this setup, I'm able to pull in any of my buddy's streams that are sitting around me and I can use my stream deck to produce a great show. Now, I don't have empirical data to say just how well it performs against a 5600X or a 5800X setup, but guys, here's the challenge. If this video gets 500 likes, I'll put all four of these different configurations head to head, including the 5900X. Regardless, streaming Warzone for nearly 20 hours in this setup is rock solid, not a single glitch or hiccup going on with the stream. I'm able to get over 120 FPS at 1440p for the entire duration. No joke guys, the X3D can perform. 
So with all the results in hand, I actually do have some pretty mixed feelings about the 5800X3D. On paper, the X3D, at least in gaming performance, outperforms all of the different processors that AMD has on the table. Of course, when it comes to the production tasks, it's hard to beat the extra cores when it comes to the 5900X and the 5950X. However, if we go and look strictly at gaming performance, is its performance crown actually going to be worth it? As we see in Hardware Unboxed's latest video where they look at GPU scaling with the AMD 5600 and Intel's 12400F, we don't start to see CPU scaling issues until we get to around an RTX 3070 class GPU. Meaning, if you're going to be using a 3060 Ti or a 6600 XT, the quality of your CPU, well, if it's a 6-core CPU, it's just not going to matter all that much. And once you upgrade to an RTX 3070 class GPU, you're pushing into some new territory like high frame rate gaming as well as additional resolutions. With that much horsepower, most gamers should be playing at 1440p. And if we continue to look at hardware and box data at that rate, CPU scaling only becomes more relevant with an RTX 3080. To reinforce this point, in our last video we covered the popular gaming resolutions over the past decade covering mainstream, mid-range, and high-end desktop gaming. We found that 1080p is starting to lose some of its dominance, especially in the mid-range and the high-end space, and in fact, as of 2021, mainstream gamers are starting to leverage 1440p at an impressive rate. This all means that the processor performance is kind of less of an issue, and we are in fact requiring more GPU performance. So even though the X3D performs very well in all of my testing today, it really all boils down to price. At the time of this recording, even my favorite 5900X is coming in cheaper than the X3D. The 12% performance improvement just doesn't justify the 14% increased cost for most high-end gamers. Coupled with the increased core count and the overall excellent all-around performance of the 5900X, the 5800X3D it really needs to be priced at around $375 to make sense. At that price, it soundly beats the 5900X in both price and performance. It's even a better value proposition compared to Intel's 12700K. But at $449, the improvements, to me at least, just don't justify the cost. AMD has made a great processor with the 5800X3D. Their fabrication innovations with increased cache sizes in the consumer marketplace have indeed shot across the bow of Intel's Alder and Raptor Lake processors, reinforcing their upcoming announcement with Zen 4, which will include DDR5, PCI Gen 5, and all of the bells and whistles to reaffirm AMD's dominance over Intel. And that's all you need from this hotfix review. Let's go ahead and ship it.